the principles, operations and activities of the Islamic banking and financial system are all patterned based from the Sharia law. My name is Noshar Shamim Binti Muhammad. I'm a student of Diploma Islam Banking and Finance under Commerce Department. And currently, I'm studying at Politeknik Sutta Idrisha, Sabak Bernam, Selangor. Why do we need Islam Banking and Financial System? Hmm, is it important in our life? So now, I will explain in details about the fundamental banking and financial system and I will also tell you a little bit of history for the first establishment of Islamic financial institution in Malaysia. So, the first fundamental is Riba. Riba has been extracted from Raba. It means addition or increase. Riba in literally means to increase, to grow, to rise, to add, to swell. It is however not every increase or growth which has been prohibited by Islam. However, riba in technically refers to the pre has been prohibited by Islam. However, riba in technically refers to the premium that must be paid by the borrower to the lender along with the principal amount as a condition for the loan or for an extension in its maturity. There is two classification of riba. First is riba adduyun and riba buyu. Riba adduyun, riba out of lending and borrowing. This kind of riba is the extra amount of money over and above the principal of the loan either imposed by the lender on the borrower in the contract or promised by the borrower in the contract. Riba al -kar. Riba is imposed or promised from the beginning. For instance, Aisha wants to borrow 1,000 ringgit from Hidayah. But Hidayah set out that Aisha was obligated to repay the debts for 1,200 ringgit. The 200 ringgit is a surplus. Riba al Jahiliya. There is no riba at the beginning. Riba is imposed only after default. This refers to the increase levied on the borrower for late repayment or failure to repay the loan. For example, Hidayah agrees to lend Aisha 500 ringgit and she is required to pay one month from now. But if Aisha fails to pay the debt of Hidayah before or at the appointed one month, Aisha is required to pay Hidayah for 600 ringgit. A surplus of 100 ringgit is the Adduyun Riba, which is Al Jahiliya type. Riba Buyu Riba in trading transactions. This kind of riba may occur out of an exchange between two riba materials of the same kind where the necessary rules are not observed. Riba Al Fight The riba materials of the same basis and same kind. Exchange are of different weights, measurements, or numbers, and they are exchanged at the same time. For example, changing 10 grams of gold type 916 with 12 grams of gold 750 type of quality. This type of exchange is illegal because it should be both skills. Riba al Nasia. The ribawi materials exchange are of equal weights, measurements, or numbers by payment of the price and delivery of the goods are made at two different times. For example, Aisha bought 6 grams of gold at a price of 1,000 ringgit on a third basis but pay on the other day. The Arabic word gara is fairly broad concept that literally means deceit, risk, fraud, uncertainty, or hazard that might lead to destruction or loss. Many classical examples of Qara were provided explicitly in the Hadith. They include the sail of fish in the sea, birds in the sky, an unburned calf in its mother womb, and unrepented fruits on the tree. 
All such cases involve the sale of an item which may or may not exist. In such circumstances, to mention but a few, the fish in the sea may be never be caught, the calf may be still born, and the fruits may never ripen. In all such cases, it is in the best interest of the trading parties to be very specific about what is being sold and for what price. Islam has clearly forbidden all business transactions which leads to exploitation and injustice in any form to any of the parties of a contract. Maisir and Kima are forms of gambling transaction that are considered as totally inequitable in Islam. Maisir refers to the easy acquisition of wealth by chance. Okay, now I will continue explain about the first assistant of Islamic financial institution in Malaysia. The establishment of Islamic banking in Malaysia can be traced back to 1963 when Tabung Haji, the Pilgrims Management and Fund Board was established by the government. The first Islamic bank to operate in Malaysia was Bank Islam Malaysia Berhad BIMB, which was incorporated under Companies Act 1965 on March 1983 and which had commerce operation on 1st July of the same year. Furthermore, to this end, the first call for a separate Islamic bank was made in 1980 in a seminar held at the National University of Malaysia. This second full-fledged Islamic bank was established as a result of the merging between Bank Bumi Putra Malaysia Berhad and Bank of Commerce Berhad. In line with the aim to expand and liberate the Islamic banking industry in Malaysia, Malaysia Islamic finance continues to grow rapidly, supported by a conducive environment that is renowned for continuous product innovation, a diversity of financial institutions from across the world, a broad range of innovative Islamic investment instruments, a comprehensive financial infrastructure and adopting global regulatory and legal best practice. Malaysia has also placed a strong emphasis on human capital development alongside the development of the Islamic financial industry to ensure the availability of Islamic finance talent. All of these value proposition have transformed Malaysia into one of the most developed Islamic banking markets in the world. Cut. Okay, now do all of you understand about why we need the Islamic banking and finance system? Islamic banking system and finance play a big role in Islamic economic growth. It is very important so that Islamic country becomes more developed. Thank you for lending me your ears. That's all from me. Till we meet again. Bye.